But by then, it was too late. And the order to kill Akane-san had already been passed on to the contractors. Contractors? Professional hitmen. So now they were on the hunt too. The Hikawa Patriarch was playing all his cards. All that to kill Akane-san? Just her alone? Crossing the Yakuza carries a heavy toll. Surely I don't have to tell you that. Mm. It was then Arakawa made one last move. And in order to save your mom, he raided the Hikawa family HQ all by himself. Arakawa! You're going straight to hell, you damn traitor! Ha, 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 ha. 
<laughs> One really has to wonder, though. How bad is your bitch holding up? The boss continued torturing the Ikawa Patriarch until he breathed his last. But no matter what he did, the madman kept on laughing. Till the bitter end. And in the end, he never found out where Kane-san was. And now he had no chance of calling off her pursuers. But wait, he knew she was headed for the Philippines, right? There had to be something he could do. There was. He flew to the Philippines as soon as possible, and once he formed his own family, his subordinates joined the search. But nothing ever turned up, and the years just kept passing by. He came to believe that if Akane-san were alive, she would have contacted him. That day never came. So he and the rest of us assumed the worst. Though no one ever said it out loud. It's the photo of Akane-san the boss had us carry around. What? I can't imagine you've seen it. This is her? Akane-san? Oh. She's native Hawaiian. Albeit with some Japanese blood mixed in. Then I have that blood too? Guess that's how it goes. Ten years had passed since Akane's son went missing. Then, one day the boss got an emergency call. It was from an officer of a Filipino group we had dealings with. He found a girl in Hawaii who looked just like her. Then that mean... maybe she moved back home at some point? Yeah, we'd been looking at that angle too, as you might have guessed. But the boss never knew where exactly in Hawaii she was born. That might be why we still came up short. So you went there to take a look? To find Akane-san? So as I got word, I was on the first flight out. It was just me, though. The boss stayed behind. Why? What? Why didn't he go with me? If I can afford to be blunt, it's because he was afraid. He'd had enough. A man can only have his hopes built up so many times. The stronger and more promising the lead, the bigger the hurt when it all fell through. I see. It makes sense. Anyway, off I went. <sighs> Eventually I found her. It was Akane's son, no doubt about it. And she was safe and sound? She was. About as safe as you can get. Granted, uh, that presented a bit of a problem for me. Huh? Say all went well, and she returned to the boss. Akane-san would inevitably want to meet her child. And in that case, she'd quickly see that her son's been living with a handicap since the transfer at the coin locker. Now, she might at first say that just being able to reunite is enough. But eventually, she'd want to know about his condition. And she'd probably ask how that happened. Before long, she and the boss would be comparing their memories from that night. Then it had hit. They'd realize they transferred their baby at different lockers. How then? They treat Masato Arakawa, the young master, the boy they believed was theirs. Uh, well... No one truly knows what would have happened. But I did know this. As long as Akane-san kept out of Japan, everything here'd stay the same. 
Neither I nor the young master would have to suffer. Wait, then you... You flew out to Wakane-san too? Exactly. When I saw Akane-san, I was planning to kill her. <laughs> Even I couldn't help trembling. I had every intention to get rid of the woman the boss loved. However, I ended up walking away, all thanks to something she said. If anyone asks, I've been dead a long time. And Akane-san has kids out there? It shouldn't come as a surprise if you think about it. A young girl on the run from hired killers with absolutely no hope of contact from the man she loved. Who could blame her for anything? From then on, it was her life to live. So I decided to honor her wishes. I gave word to the boss that Akane-san was dead. I told him the Hikawa family had reached her first that all I'd found was her lifeless body, nothing more. The boss quietly accepted my report. The search for Akane-san was called off, and she was never spoken of again. After that, I stayed in contact with her, though sparsely. I needed some control over her so that she wouldn't suddenly get homesick for Japan, you see. You're a certified asshole. Still, I get that this all started because of what Akane-san said. I'm not saying everything you did was wrong. Well, with the boss now dead and me out of prison, the situation has changed. I wrote a letter to Akane-san. I told her everything there was to know. How I betrayed the boss, and that Ichiban Kasuga, the boy who grew up in a soap land, was her child. Ironic, isn't it? Neither I nor Akane-san were finally free until long after the boss was gone. <sighs> Anyhow, Ichi, Akane-san, she tells me she wants to meet you. She does? Me? Akane-san's home address. It's right there on the front. Is this a letter from Akane-san? It's just the envelope. The letter was to stay between me and her. I'm afraid I can't show it to you. Sure, I get that. Sure, it must be strange to be in your 40s and be asked to meet your mom for the first time. But Akane-san's only getting older. A son ought to set his mother's mind at ease before she passes on, don't you think? Well, yeah. This is just one more way for me to atone for all I've done. I'll be booking your flight to Hawaii. You'll leave tomorrow night. All that's left is how you feel about it. Will you go? Not for me, but for Akane-san. Please, won't you see her, Ichi? Captain... I beg you. You know... I never thought I'd see the day you bowed your head to me. All right, I'll go see her. Well, I would have killed you if you'd said no.
What's up? Hmm. <laughs> yeah, 